everybody, and welcome to TV8's 2007 High School Football Coaches Show. My name is Mike Martin. Joining me is Chris Wright. Chris, uh, we're going to have a great season again this year. Yes, I'm really looking forward to it. It's hard to believe the summer's almost at an end. And, you know, I drove by North High School the other day, and I saw the guys practicing. And, and the track all ripped up. <laughs> and the track all ripped up, but I'm re we're ready to, ready to roll. Now, what we're going to do this year is uh, during the breaks between the coaches, we're going to show the home schedules of the different schools we're going to be covering, uh, Lutheran, North, and South. And then uh, in our final segment, Chris, we've got something uh, that we do every year. Yeah, we always try to make some predictions and things like that. Last year we didn't do so well, but we'll see if we do any better this year. Uh, maybe our fans don't remember either. We also have a bit of a change at South with their coaching staff and a bit of a change, not a bit of a change, a big change with the uh, in the Fox River Valley Conference, which is no longer the Fox River Valley. Yeah, unfortunately, the, the conference disbanded, or actually you could just say now we're going to call it the Fox River Valley uh, Classic Conference is what it's basically called. And uh, four new teams have entered, Ashwaubenon, Bayport, De Pere, and Pulaski. Uh, for the football season, uh, basically what they did is they, they are only going to play eight games, so you won't play everybody the same. Uh, which leads us to another situation where uh, North and South aren't playing a conference game, but they're going to open the season on August 24th, uh, Friday night at South High, playing each other. Now, the four schools that enter the conference are, uh, are good athletic schools, but a couple of them are really going to be pretty tough in football. Ooh. Bayport and Ashwaubenon are traditional powerhouses, and I mean, you're talking Ashwaubenon that's won some state championships, and uh, <laughs> it doesn't get any easier for the Sheboygan schools, but uh, you know, they strap on the helmets the same way as they do in Sheboygan, so let's see how it rolls. All right, we're going to step out, and when we come back, Chris will have uh, Coach Al Holzheimer from uh, Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler. Welcome back. I'm with Coach uh, Holzheimer from Kohler, Sheboygan Lutheran. Tough year last year, Coach. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Uh, we, we obviously didn't do as well as we wanted to, um, but I think we, we learned a lot with, uh, you know, the, with having the Kohler kids there. That was, a, that was a learning experience in itself there. Um, I think we were a pretty young team, even though we had 10 seniors. Um, a lot of them had played for the first time. So, yeah, there was a lot of growing, a lot of kids, a lot of sophomores played on varsity. And uh, so I hope that that continues to help us this year. Yeah, can you rebound after a year like that? I think so. I mean, our, our numbers are pretty steady from this year to from last year to this year. Um, you know, we had a pretty good enthusiastic attitude through camp. Um, you know, with that, we looked at some changes that we have to do as a as a as a football program. Um, I've got it more experienced staff this year. Uh, first time in three years, I have a defensive coordinator, so I'm not calling both offense and defense. Um, so that's that's helped tremendously. Um, I think we're better prepared when we come to practices now with me just focusing on one side of the ball. Um, also have a head JV coach um, that's new to our program, but he's had a lot of experience at other places. And uh, so the kids are really enthused about that. And we, we've started to separate our practices now. Um, so that's another change. We, we do a lot of our technique time together as a, as a group, but then um, we separate a little sooner than we have been in the past. And uh, you know, we're doing a lot of half line stuff, just to get good on good, and our older kids against older kids. But I think that's those are all things that are going to pay off. Um, we have more kids in our weight room this summer than we've ever had, so you know, just a lot of a lot of changes like that that I think we'll will rebound well from. from last Sounds year. very positive. I know I mentioned in the beginning, Kohler, Sheboygan, Lutheran. Uh, mm -hmm. How is that working out with Kohler? You know, the, the people there have been great, um, even throughout the last year. Uh, you know, I'm talking to parents. Um, their administration, their athletic director, um, they just like having football back in Kohler and so they've, they've treated us really well. Um, I'm really pleased of how, how things turned out. This year we're continuing again and, uh, and we've, we've also added a few other sports at our school that we're going to, or, or for the both schools that we're going to combine. So it's just a neat relationship uh, between the two schools. I know when we went out there last year, you could just feel the atmosphere of the Kohler people because mm -hmm. they had football for, for such a long time. It was nice to, to see them have that. Yeah, and that was, you know, I, I'd go out in the community and talk to some people, and they were really excited about that. People I didn't even know at all, and, uh, you know, just come up to you, hey, thanks for doing that. And, you know, I, I give them the credit for, you know, coming out and, and wanting to be a part of, of what we're doing. And uh, it's, it's a win-win for the kids. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. Those kids get to play a sport that they otherwise wouldn't get to play. And, 
and it helps us out too. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this year. Uh, strengths for your football team this, this season? Well, I, you know, last year with, you know, having some struggles, we, uh, you kind of find out who your, your leaders are, you know, through that. And uh, a lot of those guys are coming over as seniors this year. And so that's, that's one strength. I mean, our, our upperclassmen have, you know, been involved with the summer workouts. Um, you know, they're showing, showing the kids how to do things right. Um, so I, that's, that, that's a big, big plus for us. Um, we have all of our receivers back from last year, uh, Harrison Dale and Dominic Freeney. Um, you know, just Dominic's really quick. I mean, he's, he's a you know, track guy that's uh, done really well there. So I feel really, really good about that. Any other players that you might stand out we'll see on Friday nights? Um, right now we have a, kind of a position battle quarterback uh, with uh, Kurt Duco and Kurt Stilo. Uh, both of them are, are working hard through camp here and trying to separate themselves. Um, it's kind of new to, Kurt's been our JV quarterback last couple of years, and Kurt Duco has, and Kurt Stilo is his first shot at it, and uh, we're trying to do a little option stuff with him, and uh, he's just a, he's a short, quick kid, though, and, and uh, we'll, see what, we'll see what happens there. Um, Ryan Johansson, he, he played a slot receiver for us last year, and uh, he uh, lifted himself to fullback this year. I mean, he's, he's a really strong kid, and uh, so we're looking forward to seeing what he can do there. Um, but with the tailbacks, we have Mike Knobel, Harrison Dale's also taking some reps there too, and uh, Mike's one of the kids from Kohler, and uh, you know, he's a state tennis champion, you know, he really moves on his feet really well, and he's a pretty tough kid too, so uh, look forward to seeing him out there. Uh, you mentioned a new defensive coordinator, any new wrinkles at Lutheran? Um, pretty much a 44 defense, um, our corners are going to be pretty much man-to-man -man on an island with them, and uh, um, Dominic and Harrison and David Radloff are the, the kind of guys that are going to rotate in a corner, and so we're, we're coaching them up to, to get them going. So Sounds good. Uh, I think you guys play in one of the toughest small conferences in the league, or I mean, excuse me, in the whole state. I think there's, you know, when you talk about Random Lake and Cedar Grove and Ozaki and some of the things that these teams have played, uh, going to continue this year for the league? Yeah, it's, it, it is. I mean, I, I know some of the coaches, their numbers are, are down, but... Uh, you know, there's good quality coaches in our in our uh, conference too, and um, you know the, those kids are used to winning through their other levels and other programs. Uh, you know, Howard's Grove they had a they had one of the best JV teams, so you know if those guys carry that over, they're going to be they're going to continue to be tough. Um, but yeah, it's you know with Elkhart Lake joining back there, that's kind of a nice kind of fill the schedule up a little yeah. bit too. So um, but yeah, I look forward to a good conference season. Well, I think we got you a couple times this season, Coach. So thanks so much for coming in, okay. and uh, best of luck to you. When I return, I'll have Coach Brixen from Sheboygan North. Welcome back, everybody. I'm here with Coach Brixen from Sheboygan North. Coach, what a run last year. Yeah, last year was fun. We came in, you know, two years ago talking about making the playoffs. Uh, I think we're all, to be honest with you, a little surprised we made the playoffs, but uh, I'm not surprised at their attitude and their heart and their effort, what they gave. Um, you know, we started out in a hole 0-4 last year, and, and we battled back. And to battle back, that just shows the character of those young men. Uh, making the playoffs was just unbelievable. I think you got the most out of your team last year, and I think that's a, you know, a tribute to you and your coaches. Well, thanks. I, I agree. I've got a great staff. I'm lucky. I have a great staff, some that have been here when I got here. Uh, we made a few changes as well. But we have a good core group of coaches that really care about our kids. And they care about the kids as people before they are football players. And I think that's, that's a big key for us. Um, and, you know, they're all, they all specialize in their own areas. And uh, I can't do it all. You know, I've got all my coaches and, you know, the delegation takes place. And, and they, they do really good work for me. On a parallel, you know, to you guys, to the girls' basketball program, I think the success that they have has really encouraged young ladies to go out for girls' basketball. Can you carry the same momentum of your success last year to the football team? I'd like to think we can. I knew when I came in here two years ago that we had those kids in the hallways. And uh, for whatever reason, some of them just chose not to play football. Well, we've doubled the size of the program. You know, we're up to about 130, 140 players in the whole program, 9 through 12. And uh, we have generated that excitement. So we have a ways to go yet, I think, before we're going to get to that championship level. But, um, you know, who knows? We surprised people last year. Uh, I told the guys this year, anything can happen. We're coming into a new conference. Um, it's not going to be any easier, that's for sure. Uh, and there's some good, tough football schools coming into this conference as well. 
But, you know, uh, we're playing some good teams in the scrimmage coming up this Friday as well at Fond du Lac. We're playing Fond du Lac and Wisconsin Rapids Lincoln. And so, you know, you got to play the best to be the best, and that's always been my, my belief. Yeah, you mentioned numbers. I heard the freshman numbers are outstanding, and again, I think that's a tribute to uh, your success. Well, and also it's a tribute to youth football. Sheboygan Youth Football has implemented uh, some offense from north and some offense from south, and Chris and I, of course, we get along really, really well, and we, we appreciate what youth football has done for both of our programs. And they're still in the young stages of the development of getting their guys to learn our offense, but the bottom line is you look at Green Bay schools, Manitowoc, anybody that we're going to play, they're going to have youth programs that are going to run down even further down to probably fourth or fifth grade. And they're going to run the same thing and they're going to run into high school. So we've noticed and we've seen a big difference this year where we've had our freshmen come in. They've been running the, the wing tee now for two years as seventh and eighth graders. What a difference now looking at those freshmen as opposed to the new group that I had when I first got here. You lost uh, some pretty good ones last year, and you know Nick Jones and you know Hummer and stuff. But uh, you returned some fine players too, and, you know Matt Rosey and David Thompson and a number of others. Right. Actually, our strength is probably going to be right now our linebacking core. Uh, we lost really good kids last year. Um, we lose kids every year, but we did lose a really good group of seniors last year with uh, with Ragoza and Jones and, and you know Marafino did a great job leading us. Um, but overall, I think that uh, we've got guys to replace them. Our linebacking core, we're looking with three of the guys that have played there on and off. Two for sure, three mostly for the last year are Travis Vandewater, David Thompson, and Matt Rolsey. Now that's a strong linebacking core right there. We probably, for the first time I think I've ever been a head coach, I'm going to say we're actually a little bit slower this year, I think. We've got speed, but we're not as quick and agile as we are normally. But we actually have, I don't know exactly the number, we probably have about 10 kids over 225 which is amazing for North football because we just don't seem to get those big kids. This year we have some, uh, and we're in the process of developing them into, into good football players. Uh, any players you want to mention, other big players we should watch for on Friday nights, either on the offensive line, defensive line, specialty players or anything like that? Um, well, there's, there's so many, and you know, it, 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 it's tough to, t to pick one or two. You know? But um, we, we have a lot of guys that have to prove themselves this year. And they've been proving themselves or trying to and attempting to prove themselves and get better um, because we still have some positions that we have to fill. Now, we haven't even been to our first scrimmage yet, so we're still shuffling people around. We're getting a little better at knowing who's going to play where. But um, hopefully, you know, my goal anyway is what I'd like to see in the past is, you know, it's always nice to have a standout player, but sometimes it's even better. I think if you don't have the big standout player, and that, that sort of emphasizes the fact that you've got you know, really good continuity with your whole team, and hopefully we'll attempt to do that again this year. Hey, and that's a lot what your program was last year as well. A lot of, you know, not a lot of all-stars, but just a group of kids that bonded together, so I, yep. I agree with you there. Uh, new league, new challenges, huh? This, yeah. Uh, four new teams in the league, and you don't play everybody, it's going to be a little different. Right. Well, we have to adjust a little bit. Um, you know, this, uh, this conference... I don't care for the fact, the way it's set up. I don't mind the teams that came in. I think it's great that we're playing those four Bay teams. I think it's going to strengthen the, the conference in general. I just don't like the fact that we have to play South as a non-conference game. We'll play South every year, but it seems pretty ridiculous to play them as a non-conference game. And the same goes for East and West in Green Bay. They've got to do the same thing as well. Uh, we're fighting, you know, in two years, it's, uh, they, get, they get a chance to, to um, look back and, and see how well this has worked. And, you know, I've always been pushing, and my athletic director has been pushing for two six-team divisions, and then we'll have some crossover games. If they're going to go with this 12-team league, which they are, then it would be better to go in two separate divisions, in my opinion. Because it's real tough right now to decide who is going to be the conference champion. We might end up having two or three, diff you know, of the same, t you know, two or three teams being our conference champion. And how do you figure out who is actually the conference champion? It's going to be part of my, my ending. You're already stealing some of my thunder because you could have a bunch of teams with one losses, and that's going to be strange, and I agree. I, I, I don't know about this, the future of this. You mentioned the North-South game. It uh, just so happened, the way the schedule worked out, that uh, you don't play uh, South as a conference game this year. So in, you know, as a result, you have to play them the first game of the season, right. and uh, that's going to be unique. <laughs> right. Well, it was, it, was, it was quite a special year last year in general. But to have South as our last regular season football game, uh, the hype and, uh, and, and energy, energy that everybody brought was, was outstanding. I mean, we looked forward to that all year long without looking ahead, but we, but we did. And it was, it was it, it, I thought at the last game of the year, even somewhere in the middle, it's, you know, it's a positive thing. 
you know, we'll still go at it as a positive thing. And we're, you know, I just don't think South nor North are going to be at full strength. And, uh, you know, there's still a lot going on that first week of the season. So um, be curious to see what we do uh, if we ended up competing against each other at the end of the season. Yeah, what I don't like about it, too, is it gives possibly one team, you know, in the playoffs, one team with a loss already, too, which doesn't help as well. That's right, yep. So we'll see how that goes. Well, thanks so much for coming in, Coach. Uh, best of luck to you. We'll Thank you. obviously see you a week from Friday and come out of there healthy this week on Friday night, or excuse me, Saturday at your scrimmage. Uh, when I, uh, excuse me, when Marty returns, he'll have Coach Hine from Sheboygan South. Joining me on the set is uh, South High head football coach Chris Hine. And Chris, a little different setup this year. I know last year, Dave, and you were uh, co-head coaches. This time, you're all alone. Uh, what are some of the challenges with being the, uh, the head guy? Well, I think the, the biggest challenge for any head coach is the stuff that happens off the field, um, the administrative stuff, you know, the ordering of uniforms, uh, equipment, inventory and equipment. Uh, just the demands off the field have been the biggest challenge. Um, you know, now that we're into practice, it's actually a relief for me. I feel like I have more time now to do things that, that I really got into coaching for, and that's, and that's to work with the kids and, and to be on the field with them. One of the things was, you know, getting in touch with you to uh, set up the interviews and that that we're doing today, and uh, <laughs> caught you on a bad day. It was like 90 degrees out, yeah. and you're moving. Yeah. So that's got to all add up, too. Yeah, that was bad timing too but but my roommate decided to get married the week before football so uh, at that time I thought I probably should move out would probably be the right thing to do and and um, yeah it was not a very nice day weather wise now Ray Smith is, was one of the top backs in the conference last year and he got hurt he's coming back from an injury and uh, how's he doing uh, well it's early in the year I mean obviously we've had three padded practices at this time but we have huge expectations for Ray. He started since his sophomore year, and, and uh, you know, he's known in the conference as a talent. As you mentioned, he, he missed the last four games, really, of last season. And uh, he looks to be healthy. We're just hoping that he's coming out with the attitude that he should dominate games this year, and we really expect him to. The beginning of last season, you experimented with a one-back offense and uh, finished up with a two-back offense. What are you yeah. going to go with this year, and who's going to be that second back? I know well, I think played back there quite a right. bit last year. It's going to vary. I mean, it really depends on, on who emerges in the, in the first two weeks of practice. Uh, we're going to try to get our best 11 players on the field, uh, and we really don't know at this point who those 11 are going to be. If it's going to be uh, four receivers and one back or two backs and, and two receivers or two backs and three receivers and no tight end. I'm um, really at this point, I can honestly tell you, uh, we're, we're looking at that. That's, that's why we have two days and that's one of the big things we're looking at is, is do we have somebody that can be in the backfield with Ray or are we better off with another receiver? When you look at South High football over the last uh, seven, eight, nine years, I think one thing that stands out is the offensive line play has uh, really excelled actually. And uh, how does that look to be this year? We're very young on the offensive line. We'll, it's very likely we're going to start four juniors um, and one senior, James Putel, is our only returning starter on the offensive line. He is a junior. Um, so we're an experience, but we're very excited. We, we like our kids there a lot. It's just how long is it going to take them to uh, mature, to, to understand what it takes to play football at the varsity level in a, in a very good conference now this year. One of the things that you're coming back with is a lack of skilled players, at least starters from last year. I know you lost Wilson and Lancer mm -hmm. was a you know excellent tight end and Taylor Schwartz at quarterback. Uh, who's going to fill those spots? Well, a quarterback right now looks to be John Kabai, but he's being challenged uh, by Jake Risto. Two very good athletes that we like a lot. Good gonna, friends too, I might Yeah, say. good friends, play baseball together. Um, we like both of them a lot. We're, uh, we have a lot of confidence in both, so we're going to use our quarterback, I think, more than we have in the past. Um, so John right now looks to be uh, have the lead in the, at that position. At the other receiver position, uh, we do return Travis Burnett at our split end. Um, and right now there's a, there's a competition between Wilson, Curtis Wilson, and Grant Renzelman, who's out for football for the first year, and we're really excited about him and what he's shown so far. Uh, we talked a lot of offense. I know you love defense on, in, uh, in the football game, and uh, you've called the defense over the last number of years. With being the head coach, how is that all going to shake out, calling offense, calling defense? Well, I'm still going to call the defense, and uh, that's my primary focus. 
Uh, that is what I, what I think I know best. So I, I don't want to move away from that. And Chris Korf will be our offensive coordinator this year. Uh, he did, I think, a great job the last five games of the season last year, stepping into a position that he'd never done before. So I have a lot of confidence in, in him calling the offense and really want to stay out of that as much as I can. Let's talk a little more about the defense, Chris. Uh, you know, the unit itself, what's going to be your base defense? You know, who's going to excel on defense? Yeah, I guess things. basically we're a 4-4 a four, four defense, I guess you could call us, but we do play multiple fronts. We've done that since I've been here, and, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, we don't bring back a lot of experience on defense. Really, uh, two kids that had started for us last year, Colin Johnson, who was all-conference safety last year, um, and Jeff Zelko. And in week four, we'll be getting back Steve Bakhti, who was an, should be an exceptional linebacker for us. So we're going to be an experience on defense. It's I remember back when I was at Chilton, one of the best teams they had was a very quick team. Uh, on defense, I'm talking about. And, uh, How's the quickness look on your defensive unit? I like our speed right now, I do. And, and it's a good thing we have speed because we don't have a lot of size, especially early in the season um, until we get some of the players I mentioned before back. We're going to be small in defense, and, but I'd take speed anytime time uh, over size. And since I've been at South, we've never really been a very big defense. Um, we've always predicated our defense on speed and hustle and really trying to eliminate mental errors. Let's talk a little bit about two-way starters because I know there's an argument on the board. You know, people say we want to get your best athletes on the field, and there's mm -hmm. another argument saying, well, you want to keep your best yeah. athletes at their best position fresh. Well, where do you stand on that? Well, we we started two platooning about four years ago, and and I think it's something that that I still believe in. Um, I think it has there are a lot of advantages to it. I think it helps your numbers because you have the potential to have 22 different starters, um, which helps your off-season commitment. I think we can focus then on that one player can focus on one position and should become theoretically better at that one position than if he had to spend time in practice trying to learn an offensive position and a defensive position. So I think we also elevate each player's ability at their one position. So it's not something that we really are going to move away from. There's always exceptions. Mm -hmm. Although this year, as of right now, is the first year we will have nobody as of right now playing both Very both sides of the ball. I, I like your argument. I think it's yeah. really valid. Let's let's uh, jump over to the new conference this year. Uh, obviously, you're going to play North the first game of the year. It's going to be non-conference. Uh, how does South seem to shake up in that respect with the new conference? I know Ashwaubenon and Bayport are pretty tough in yeah. the football area. There is absolutely no question that our conference has gotten significantly stronger in football. I mean, Ashwaubenon has won numerous state titles in the last decade alone. Mm -hmm. Bayport's been in the state quarterfinals Division I the last two years. Uh, so we're bringing in two very highly respected, very strong uh, football programs into this conference, not to mention De Pere, which is an up-and-coming program in Pulaski. So and you add that to Notre Dame and Manitowoc and the traditional powers within our conference, and things have gotten tougher, and, and that's no secret to anybody. How do you see your team shaking out this year? Well, I think, you know, number one, after last year, I just don't even want to think about pr predictions. <laughs> we didn't pick you. <laughs> you obviously can, you know, the one thing I learned from last year is don't ever take health for granted. Uh, whether it was our players' health or my health missing the North game, uh, you know, we just were devastated last year by injuries. And so, number one, we need to stay healthy. If, if, I, if you could guarantee me right now that we would stay healthy the entire season, then I could give you some predictions. But... I don't know if you can make that guarantee. Well, great answer, Chris. Chris, thanks a lot for stopping in, and good luck this season. We'll see you on the 24th. Uh, we're going to step out, and when we come back, Chris and I will be on the set, and we're going to talk about uh, the TV8 schedule and about our annual predictions for this upcoming season. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. First of all, I want to thank all the coaches for coming in and helping to make this show possible. Uh, they always give their time, Chris, and uh, we really appreciate it. Yes, and they're always just wonderful interviews as well, and uh, Sheboygan should be very lucky to have such fine gentlemen running their kids' uh, programs. Let's talk a little bit about TV8's football schedule, and if you don't have it, I've got a copy. <laughs> but uh, we've got some great games coming up, not just on the high school level either. Yes, we're going to 
Obviously be out at Lakeland again this season, which is always a fun trip to go out there. Hopefully it won't rain on us like it did last year. <laughs> oh, that was a downpour. <laughs> but uh, they have a new coach out there as well, so things will be uh, changed out there. A uh, couple Lutheran games, and of course, probably get to see a couple new teams that we talked about before that have entered the conference. Let's talk about that first game coming up. North-South. North-South game right away on a Friday, and Coach Brixton, I know, mentioned that it's going to be a little strange starting at the beginning of the year. Those teams probably won't be at the peak of what they will be at the end of the year, which makes it real exciting, but uh, uh, they're going to have to go off last year's tape, maybe some uh, tape from the uh, scrimmages if they send a, a scout or how, not that any coaches would do that, but go to the scrimmage before that, but it'll be exciting. At the beginning of the show, we talked just briefly about the new schools in the, in the Fox River Classic Conference, and uh, we're going to get to see two of those schools, Ashwaubenon and De Pere. Uh, what do we know about Ashwaubenon? Well, as I mentioned before, they're a, they're a powerhouse, and they'll be a team to reckon with, which we'll mention in a couple minutes. <laughs> okay. Let's go through the part of the program that uh, we really enjoy, <laughs> and we did terrible last year. Let's talk a little bit about the... Uh, Central Lakeshore Conference. Last year I predicted Ozaki as the winner. You also predicted Ozaki as the winner. The winners were Random Lake, Cedar Grove, uh, and Howard's Grove. They all finished at uh, five and one. Uh, this year, I'm gonna go with Coach Al. He had mentioned uh, Random Lake earlier in the program. I'm agreeing with that statement too, Marty. So we're right off on the same foot. So the we're first both going to be wrong. On the same one this year, again, the same conference. I think Random Lake has a lot of their horses back, as, as Coach Holzheimer mentioned, and I agree with that. Uh, one of the things that uh, Coach Al said was that most of those schools that uh, were up at the top last year had lost some uh, players. And I know one good one that we saw last year, uh, Cedar Grove's Joe Burton, they're gone. Yeah, and he ran all over uh, Sheboygan, Luther, Kohler last year. and. I think the, the, the uh, teams in that conference are glad he graduated. Let's talk a little bit about the Eastern Wisconsin Conference. Last year, uh, we both picked Sheboygan Falls. They did not finish on top. It was uh, Kewaskman Plymouth at 6-1. and one. This year, I'm picking Chilton. Yeah, well, with Sheboygan Falls finally losing uh, Coach Yedis after a number of years, I'm going to try to make a change, and I'm actually going to take Plymouth this season. So things will be different in the Purple Land over there next door to us, but I think they'll be a kind of an interesting team to watch, and we should watch them in the paper because Falls is always very exciting for football. The new coach out there is a gentleman by the name of Mike Nixon, and uh, I know in talking to uh, Doug Johnson throughout the summer, we umpired some baseball games together. He thinks they're going to be pretty tough again. Yeah, I'm sure even they with will. with the new coach. I'm sure they will. Okay, let's jump to the Fox River Classic Conference, and they have four new schools. Now, I looked on the Internet, and I know there was some disagreement uh, whether Ashwaubenon made the playoffs or not. I was definitely able to nail down Bayport made the conference or made the playoffs last year. Uh, last year, I picked South. You picked Notre Dame. It was a co-championship, so you get half a point. <laughs> I got zero. Manti and Notre Dame both finished at 6-1. and one. I'm picking Notre Dame this year. I think Notre Dame will be uh, outstanding. But one thing, as we mentioned before, with the schedules mixed, you don't always play certain teams. Uh, it's pretty tough to pick. I'm going to take Ashwaubenon, though, as a, a power and to spoil the old schools of the Valley. All righty. Our first TV8 game is going to be August 24th. We'd mentioned it over and over on the program. It'll be North-South, and it'll be a non-conference game. Uh, thanks goes out to the crew for their fine work, Kerry Kautzer, Scott Miloff, Fritz Zank, and Steve Reiner. For Chris Wright, I'm Mike Martin saying thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you down the road.